Hey there, VCHHD students. My name is Andy. I'm a VC Health and Human Development teacher. In this short video, we're going to look at the social model of health. This is relevant to Unit 3, Area Study 2 for the 2025 plus HHD study zone. If you don't already, there's lots of ways you can engage with the Health Resources Hub. If you're on YouTube at the moment, you can subscribe with a button in the bottom corner of the video there. That means you'll get alerts to all of our new videos across the year. We've also got our website, the hrh.net.au, where there's opportunities for students and teachers. You can see there we've got our Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook page where you can follow us and get alerts to new videos and other opportunities as well as SAC and exam tips and advice and also our email info at the hrh.net.au if you'd like to get in touch. So what parts of the Unit 3 course does this relate to? So you can see here the key knowledge and the key skills that are relevant to the social model of health. So we have done some previous videos already looking at some of the reasons for improvements in Australia's health status since 1900. So we've already covered the old public health, the biomedical approach and improvements in medical technology. So if you haven't already, please go back and check those out in our back catalogue. So today we're looking at the concept of the social model of health. We will do other videos on the Ottawa Charter for Health Promotion, so please look out for those. And you can see there there's a number of key skills that are asking you to be able to give examples of the social model of health and then link those into some improvements in Australia's health outcomes, including improvements in Australia's health status since 1900. And also one there that's asked you to describe the relationship between the biomedical and social models of health, and we'll do that in an upcoming video as well, so look out for that. Okay, so what is the social model of health? So you can see here a description could be that it is a model of health focused on preventing health conditions by directing efforts towards addressing the physical, sociocultural, and political environments. So hopefully you'll note that this is different to the biomedical approach, which was looking at diagnosis, treatment, and cure. This is really focused on prevention. And it mentions there by directing efforts towards addressing physical, sociocultural, and political environments. So I talked to my students about the fact that this model is really trying to encourage people to engage in healthy behaviours and that's why it's associated with the Ottawa Charter for Health Promotion, so trying to enable people to increase control over and to improve their health. So you can see there it mentions in the dot points below that that around the 1970s there was a lot of lifestyle related diseases such as cardiovascular disease that were becoming leading cause of morbidity and mortality particularly in countries like Australia. And so even though people were aware that behaviours such as smoking and poor nutrition and alcohol consumption contributed to these conditions, that didn't mean that they were necessarily engaging in healthy behaviours. So it became apparent to government and other organisations that changes needed to happen to encourage people to engage in healthy behaviours and make healthy choices. And so this approach became known as the social model of health. So it's good to know some examples of the social model of health. So if you are answering a question and you're drawing upon this model, you can give some examples. Or perhaps if you're looking at a case study or a scenario and they're asking you to identify some examples of the social model of health, you can find these. So this is often linked to things such as policies and laws, such as seatbelt laws or smoking restrictions and sun safe policies. So if you think about all of those examples given there, they're all things that people are being encouraged to do or they're doing to try to prevent themselves from developing a health condition. The second one there is talking about education, such as government health promotion campaigns on TV and social media that might be raising awareness of the risks of behaviour such as smoking. So you might have seen some of those ads around before. There's also websites that provide free health promoting information, such as healthy recipes, or there might be free seminars in workplaces so that employees can engage in healthier behaviours whilst at work. Then the third one is looking at health promotion programs, such as perhaps the SunSmart program or the Driver Reviver program, and you'll probably look at a number of different programs in class. So all of these are examples of the social model of health because they're related to engaging in behaviours that can help prevent people from developing certain health conditions. Just a reminder at the bottom there is a reminder that we've got our free student newsletter. If you're a three and four student, you can head to our website, the hrh.net.au, and sign up to that. We're sending out a couple of times a term a student newsletter with free SAC and exam resources and tips and advice. So please sign up to that if you haven't already. So then you should know some strengths and limitations of this model. So when we looked at the biomedical approach to health, we also looked at strengths and limitations. So for this one here, some of the strengths, you can see it's focused on promoting healthy behaviours and that can promote good health and well-being. It means that people might be less likely, okay, to develop disease and illness. And so that's good. They're spending more time in good health. Another strength is it's not as costly as the biomedical approach. So when we talked about the biomedical approach, we talked about how health professionals and medical technology is involved 
involved and therefore that can be quite expensive. Whereas this one is focused more on health promotion campaigns and activities. And although they often do cost quite a bit of money in comparison to things like hospitals and medical technology, et cetera, it's typically less expensive, okay, when compared to that other approach. The last one there is talking about health education is often at the center of the social model of health. So you're trying to educate and upskill people so they've got some of this information and knowledge and skills to engage in healthy behavior. And that can be passed on to future generations to also improve their health and well-being. And that can contribute to sustainable improvements in health outcomes. So that's another strength. In terms of some limitations, not all health conditions and illnesses can be prevented, such as some genetic conditions, and therefore this approach is not always alone going to improve health outcomes. It also doesn't focus on diagnosing, treating, curing health conditions and illness that are present for individuals, and therefore can't always be relied upon to improve health outcomes for people if they have existing conditions. And then the last one there mentions, although health education is often at the center of this approach, sometimes people might just ignore this information. So you might have seen, okay, ads on TV encouraging you to exercise more or eat a healthier diet, but that doesn't mean you'll always necessarily engage in those behaviors. So often some of this information can be ignored. Remember when it comes to strengths and limitations, try to make sure that you flesh out your examples. Don't make them too brief. You want to make sure it's really clear why what you're saying about this particular model is a strength or a limitation. Okay, so let's have a look at a sample question and answer. So the sample question here is asking you to outline how the social model of health may have contributed to improvement in Australia's health status over time for two marks. So in the sample answer there, it starts with an example. So government health promotion campaigns on television warning people of the risks of smoking may have led to less people taking up this habit and then others quitting. So this is likely to have contributed to a reduction in smoking and conditions such as lung cancer, which are often caused by chemicals in cigarettes, and therefore that can help to reduce mortality rates for lung cancer. So you can see the first sentence in the sample answer there is the example of the social model of health, and the second sentence is linking to that improvement in stress health status over time. So there'd be a mark for each of those. So you can go back and practice doing this in your notes for a range of different examples, and that hopefully will hold you in good stead if you come up with a similar question. Okay, don't remember there's a really good resource that I've been involved in helping to provide additional practice questions for your SAC preparation and end of your exam preparation. So that's this ACE revision questions book for HHD. It's got over 500 marks worth of practice questions, as well as a full chapter on answering extended response questions and a full trial exam. And it's got full sample answers for all of those. So you can head to book.acevc.com and order a copy of that and it'll come in the post. As I mentioned earlier, we've also got our website, the hih.net.au, where there's opportunities for students and teachers. So please check that out. Thanks so much.